Now that we know how to define and use structures and the appropriate functions that come with structures, we're going to look at designing our own functions that operate on structures. First, we're going to design a function that works on the address data structure that we saw before. Let's recall the steps of the design recipe, and then we'll follow them. I've also included an example definition of Bloody Hall as an example of an address. Now let's think about designing our first function that works on addresses. This function is going to format an address as a string, and it will be called format address. Format address takes an address and produces a string. Our header specifies that the input will be A, and our purpose statement tells us that we're going to write out the address in a string as we would write it on a letter. Now let's look at some examples. We're going to write these examples using check expect as we've seen before. Here are two examples, one using our existing definition and one using a new address that we've just created for this example. Now let's look at the template. Previously, all our templates have just reminded us to use the input, but now our template will get somewhat more interesting. Let's begin by copying our header into our template. Then let's remember that A, our input, is one of the things we can use. However, an inventory of what pieces of data we have available will include more than just A. In fact, A has two different pieces of information that we could use, the number for the street number and the string for the street name. How do we access those? We access them with the two courtesy functions that our define struct created. Those functions are called address-number and address-street. And we can ap apply them to A in order to get out the number and string inside of the input to format address. With that, we have our full template describing the two pieces of data that we have available to us to define our function. Now let's move on to defining this function and combining those pieces of information into the string we want. Now there's two important functions that we're going to need to use that are built into the beginning student language. Those functions are called string append. String append takes in two strings and produces one larger string. The number to string function takes in one number and produces a string with that number uh, printed as the characters. Let's use these two functions to put together these two pieces of data. Let's start by using number to string to convert the address number into a string. Then let's use string append to convert multiple strings into one string. Now let's try running our function and see that it works. In order to be able to do that, we're going to need to comment out our template and our header so that Dr. Racket knows that the definition of format address that we want to use is the one here at the end. Now we'll run our code. And we'll see two problems. Those two problems are that we actually got 700 Woodlawn Avenue without a space, and we got one Main Street without a space. These are the results that you'll see when Dr. Racket discovers that your tests do not actually correspond to the behavior of your function. Let's close this and think about what we might have done wrong. When we look at the format address function, we see that at no point did we introduce a space in between the house number and the street. So we're going to change that by using string append again. To insert a space before the street address or the street name. Now, when we run our program, Dr. Racket tells us that both our tests pass. 
Now it's a little inconvenient having to use string append multiple times like this. So fortunately, string append makes life a little easier. Some functions that are built into beginning student, like string append, can take mo more than one or more than two inputs. And in fact, string append can take any number of strings that you give it, and it puts them all together. So I'm going to change our uses of string append twice to use string append only once with three different inputs. Here we have string append with three inputs, converting the number to a string, a space, and then the street name. And now when I click the run button, our program still works. Now we've completed all six steps of the design recipe and we have a working version of the format address function.